canvas. So as I mentioned before, we have ATEX and the IECX. So ATEX is basically related to the European market. So the regulation of the agents are related to the EU region. And we have two main directives that are part of this ATEX framework. So basically the first one here, the directive 127, is related to uh, health and safety of workers in a potentially explosive atmosphere. So here we're talking about people, not not devices. The directive 114 then it's a, a directive focused on manufacturers. So it should be like a manufacturer icon. Uh, so it's applied for manufacturers of equipment. So it will define the essential health and safety requirements. So that's the the idea behind the ATEX. The IECX is um, international. Is the International Electronic Commission for certification to standards relating to equipment for use in explosive atmospheres. That's the, the idea. So the idea here is supposed to be more easy the trade of devices that are, uh, that are meant to, to, to be installed in explosion scenarios. So it's more not focused only for Europe, it's more like an international classification. We will see all the components that we we'll have. So the devices has a label and this label is not like two digits like we saw previously. Uh, we have different codes and, and segments of uh, tables, etc. So it's a little bit complex, but I will explain in the details now. So first, a text. and IECX. I will put in the screen um, a label, a sample label that you guys can uh, understand and see how it looks like a label that is uh, related to an, an, an ATEX and another one for IECX. Okay, and, and basically we're talking about 11 elements on this type of labels. The first one, it's an European directive, so this CE part, the notified by number is this little number next to the CE. So this CE mark here basically is, uh, shows if the equipment has been assessed by the manufacturer and deemed to meet the European safety, health and environmental protection requirements. And this number here, uh, in the, next to the, the CE, is the notified body number and this notified body number is an organization designed to assess the conformity of products before replacing the market in Europe. So that's the, the first part here. I will not get details in more details because that's basically what this uh, means. After that we have this EX that is the explosion proof uh, protection uh, logo from Matex. And then we start to have the other segments. So equipment, group, equipment, category, environment, explosion protection, protection type, group, temperature class, and equip equipment protection level. This last one is basically only seen in the IECX. Uh, we, are, we don't see in labels that are only ATEX. We, we can see a few labels that are like a merge, that you can have everything like this one here. But uh, if it's only for ATEX, we will not have this last part here. Okay, so this is an example of uh, ATEX plus the last part, and this is only for 
the IECX. So going deep in the in the concepts of the other elements, we have the equipment group. So equipment group, we basically classified in two type of groups of equipment. First one, equipment uses mines. Second one, all other areas. So we're basically talking about group one, below ground, and group two, above ground. Okay, so equipment category. This is related to the zone that the equipment will be installed in. We have uh, IM classification and three categories. The M1 and M2 are meant to be used on mines. Category 1 is for equipment intended for use in zone 0 or 20. And then I will go to the zones and explain better. That's the zones that we, we are handling in the category one. In the category two, we will handle zone one and 21. In category three, we are handling two and 22. So what these zones mean? We have two classifications of zones, gas and dust. And the definition here is basically the first one here, zero for gas and 20 for dust, are defined as areas that are explosive atmosphere may occur continuously or for a long period of time. So a critical area, uh, that's the, the most critical one in, this, in these three groups. Okay, so we'll put here three, blast, tears, explosion, that will be the most critical one. The second one, the number one for gas and 21 for dust, are defined as areas where a potentially explosive atmosphere is likely to exist under normal operation conditions. So I will put here as two blasts. And the last one, Two for gas and 22 for dust are defined as areas where a potentially explosive atmosphere is not likely to occur under normal operation conditions. So even that, so even that we are not expecting an explosion under normal conditions, this camera must have this protection to avoid any issue. So let's move to the other element, environment. We have two types of environment. The first one we are talking about gases, vapors, or mist. And the second one we are talking about dust or flying. So this indicates whatever the environment contains hazard gases, means or vapors or dust and etc. It's related to the environment. Next one, we have protection type. So we have one or two lowercase letters that indicate the method used to prevent ignition in a hazard environment. We will have a table that I will put in the screen that you guys will be able to see the symbols related to the type of protection, the zones, and etc. 
Okay. Next one, groups. This is related to the equipment group. The first one, as we already saw in the other type of elements, is related to mines and specifically for methane, gas, and coal dust. Coal dust. The group two is for gases, vapor, or mix. And we have three subclassifications in this group. So the first one here, the 2A, we're talking about gases such as propane. The 2B, for gases such as ethylene and this 2C is related to gases such as hydrogen or acetylene. This is the group two. And the group three is related to dust or flying. With the subdivisions, the first one, the three A, is related to flying. The three B is for non conductive. Dust and the 3C is for conductive dust. Moving to the next element, temperature classification. So this temperature will define the maximum temperature that the equipment surface may reach in the environment. Okay, and the last one, the equipment. So again, this is only required for the IEEX as ATEX category already defined in the other part of the code, but we have here the corresponding coding for the APL. So in this table here, the relation between ATEX 1G is GA or 1D is DA to G, GB to D, DB, 3G will be GC, and 3D will be DC. So basically we have here gas and dust classification, switching positions, and instead of 1, 2, 3 will be A, B, C. Okay, so this first part here is the most critical one that will handle more zone, so some more uh, the protection level is higher. So the first one, as we're talking about gases, we're talking about zone 0, 1, and 2. 
And the second one for those who are talking about the zones 20, 21, and 22. And now the other segments, the two and three, we're basically restricting the zones to one and two for gases, 21, 22 for dust. And the last one, the zone two and 22 for gas and for dust. Okay, so with this combination, you are able to uh, cross-reference the ATEX category or uh, getting by the typical zone suitability the correct EPL for the code.